Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install 7-zip onto Windows 10. So let's open up the web browser and we'll go to Google and we'll just type in 7-zip and we'll get to this website here, 7-zip. So my advice is don't download the executables here, these two X's. Go to downloads here and download the MSI file. This will make a better installation. There's a couple of reasons for it that I found, so I'll explain why. There's two versions here, there's 32-bit and 64-bit. If you're not sure which one you need, go to the start menu here and type in system. And when you type in system, click on system information. And in here, you'll see um, system type x64 so i need the 64-bit version here if it says x86 then you need the 32-bit version so if i go ahead and click download on this 64-bit version we'll download that file we'll open up this folder let's just drag and drop that into here we can close the browser norton's done a scan on it and it's fine it's safe and when we install it we'll get this little prompt so let's just follow the on-screen instructions and we'll click next and click install. So the software is fully installed. We can click finish and we should see that on our start menu here. We've got 7-zip now here. And if we open up this folder and delete this installation, we don't need it anymore. The reason why we use the MSI file is when we right click now, we'll get the context menu here. If you use the executable download, this doesn't seem to appear. It causes some problems. I'm not sure why, but it just doesn't seem to work correctly. So there's a reason um, why I've got this folder here, sample files. If I open it, sometimes I need to send quite a few files to my clients. So it might be some graphic design work I'm doing or I'm working on a web project and I need to see some, or some logo designs or whichever type of artwork it is. And if I want to send all of these images, I could, in theory, drag and drop each one or drag and drop them into batches. But they're like pretty large files. I don't really want to be sending 100 meg worth of data over email. So what normally what I'll do is go into this folder, select everything, and then right click, go to 7-zip and click add to archive. When I click add to archive, I will select, um, I'll pretty much leave everything default in here. The only thing I might do is put a password in if it's quite sensitive information, but the settings as default are pretty good. So just leave it as a default zip file because if they don't have seven zip on the other end where you're sending it, they can use any other type of zip application like WinRep that will unzip it and pretty much leave everything the same. Click OK and it's going to zip all of this data up into a single file. Now you can just send that via WeTransfer. So here's the file. It contains all of these images. If we double click inside, we can see all the pictures in here. There are various sizes. If I close that, if I right click on this and go to its properties, it will be a slightly smaller file size. If this was 100 meg, this is 99.3. So you're not going to save a lot of uh, space by any means. But now we can take that one file and use something like WeTransfer to send all of these images as a single file. So you haven't got to drag and drop all of these into WeTransfer. You can just drop the one zip file and they can unzip it at the other end. So that's why I find 7-zip to be very, very useful, especially on the context menu where you can just right click select the whole folder and just zip it and it's job done. Okay, so I hope you find that tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.